Okay, Walter Lewin's problem 190. Uh, we charge up a capacitor with 24 volts across it, one microfarad capacitor, uh, and then we throw the switch. That 24 volts we can forget about, and now these two capacitors are brought into the circuit. So, what we end up with is we now have a, the final situation is this capacitor with some charge on it, these two capacitors connected in series with some charge on it. And because the charge has spread, there must be a new voltage across C1, and similarly there are now voltages across uh, v uh, C2 and C3. Uh, initially they had been uncharged. Um, so, using the well-known formulae, uh, we can calculate the equivalent capacitance of this, this arm. Uh, 1 over Cx, I've called it Cx, 1 over Cx equals 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 uh, equals a, a, a half plus a third, which gives us, inverting back again, Cx equals 1.2 microfarads for that arm there. Here we know it's 1 microfarad, so simply in parallel we add the two together, 1 plus 1.2 gives us a new capacitance for the whole circuit of 2.2 microfarads. So we know straight away, because we, 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 we've, we've got a fixed charge, uh, and we knew what the charge was initially, it was 24, uh, uh, 24 volts uh, times the capacitance, which was 1 microfarad. Um, uh, so we, we've got 24 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. The new voltage is going to be the capacitant, the, the charge, which won't have changed, 24 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, divided by our new capacitance, which we've just worked out to be 2.2 times 10 to the minus 6. That gives us a, char a, a voltage V1 on capacitor 1 of 10.91 volts. Similarly then, the charge on um, capacitor 1 must have gone down, uh, since the voltage has gone down, uh, and it's the capacitance times the new voltage, which gives us 10.91 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. The charge uh, uh, on the capacitors in series um, is Q, the total charge, uh, because that can't change, minus the charge that's left on capacitor 1. So it's 24 microcoulombs uh, minus 10.91 microcoulombs, and we get 13.09 times 10 to the six times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, 13.09 coulombs. Now, that must be charge on that capacitor is going to be the same as the charge on that capacitor. There's no way charge is getting in here. It can only come in this way. So we immediately know that the charge on capacitor 2 uh, is 13.09 times 10 to the minus 6, and we know that the charge on capacitor 3 uh, is 13.09 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. As I've just said, they're the same. Uh, and then it's fairly trivial. All we do then is say, right, the voltage on capacitor 2, the potential difference, will be the charge on capacitor 2 uh, divided by the capacitance, 13.09 times 10 to the minus 6 over 2 times 10 to the minus 6, 6.545 volts. Uh, and similarly for V3, you work through it and uh, Q3 over C3, and you will get, because we're now dividing by 3 times 10 to the minus 6, uh, you get 4.364 volts on V3. And that gives you your 1, 2, 3, 4, um, five, six answers that Walter Lewin was looking for. Thank you.